Hello everyone, welcome along to the studio here at Rathbone Manor. Um, I'm up here because it's pretty damn cold in the workshop again. Thought I'd do my video up here today. Um, I'm taking a look at some of my old British vintage spanners here. Uh, what is quite interesting to see is the different operating mechanisms on them all. And we've got um, Joseph Lucas, we've got some Garrington's footprints, uh, Abingdon's and King Dick's over here. So um, where should we start then guys? Let's start over here, might as well. And I'm not sure if this is a uh, genuine um, Joseph Lucas or not because it, all it's got on here is stamped. It's 93, I think we've got stamped here. It's uh, quite rusty. It's been used, you can see that in the jaws just here. Little dents and dings in there, look. And the mechanism's quite sticky, quite stiff. And of course we have a screw missing just here, look. So I say whether that's a copy or a genuine um, Joseph Lucas, don't really know. Now just here, I believe this one is um, it's got some government markings on it. As you can see just there. Wall finish on this one, I think this one's got wall finish on it. Yep, okay. And this is a... Well, how is this one marked again? Let's have a look. It's just got uh, a number stamped into it. But I think this could very well be a proper uh, wall finish Joseph Lucas. Nicely complete this one. It's a little bit stiff. It looks like somebody's... Uh, Held it in the vice at some point or another at the top there. Look, yeah, you can see that, can't you? What else we got then? Here's another, another one. What we got here? This is um, what's this one marked as? Yeah, this one's marked as Gerda, Joseph Lucas, etc. Obviously, I picked all these lot up at the uh, car boot sale in years past. What does this one run like? Not too bad. That's all right. A bit gritty in places by the feel of it somehow or another but uh, yep so I think like uh, these lot would all cost me a pound each I think including this interesting little one here this is quite interesting because again this is little uh, Joseph Lucas got the number etc on there but this has also got the little um, patented pipe grip on there which you can swing out of the way and use them like a standard spanner, which is quite interesting. I got this one from Mr. Silver Van Man. I think he charged me a pound for this. This is a quite a nice little spanner. Um, I might even have a video of this one on my channel. If I have, I'll put you a link at the top, just here. How's that one in? Let's move along to the Garringtons. Well, it's very nice, uh, ten inch. Um, the jack door, it says there, look, the jack door. Got there then. Oh yeah, British made, 10 inch. What we've got on the other side. Got some markings on there as well. Precision, Garrington forged, precision forged. Uh, this one's also got um, a year date on it, which is uh, 1151, I think it was at O. Oh, it's definitely 1151 on there, so 1951. Of course, on these ones we have the now standard um, Barco style adjustment on there. I've also got this little uh, 8 inch one here. This one's state stamped, it's at 955, yep, 0955. That one again, we've got the similar. Uh, this one runs a lot cleaner. Than the 10 inch one, but again, we've got Jack Door made in England, precision forged A88. Um, looking at this one, I would say this one was owned by a plumber because we have some seriously dried in boss white here. So I'd imagine this has seen many, many years of use by a plumber. This one runs quite nicely, apart from when it gets down to the end just here, because I think if we look in here, just there. You can see there's a little um, wall just there, a little sticky out bit, and it. it tends to hang up like it's done just there. It hangs up unless you push, push it up and then it'll run again. So I think what we're going to have to do is get a file and take that little bit off there. But uh, yeah, so that's the, uh, the two Garringtons then. We have a couple of different um, 
stages of the uh, footprint adjustable spanner here. Again, we've got a completely different operating mechanism. This one runs quite nicely. I think this is a fairly uh, later version because we've barely got any stampings on here at all. There is a footprint just there, but I can't see any other markings on it. What have we got just there? No, no, I don't think there's any other markings on it. This one's a nice and straight, so it's not been abused too much, I don't think. But it runs quite nicely. This is a 9 inch, by the way, and I say this is a fairly late model. Now what I have here, this one here is a fairly early model, this one, and I would think this one is from the turn of the uh, 20th century, so sort of like, you know, the end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s. And I think this because we've got uh, the number 340 there. What have we got here? All steel. And a few other numbers here. Can't really make those out. There's the 340. What have we got on here then? Got a few more markings here. They've been. Uh, I've cleaned this up a little bit because it was quite pitted. But it's got again all steel. A number there. The footprint. And we've got Made in England on the other side. I don't think this one's had too much abuse, really. The jaws are in fairly good nick. There's a bit of a little dent in there. But it's fairly straight other than that, as you can see. So there's two very nice footprints there. Nine inch. Uh, they did uh, quite a few sizes in these little fellows. This is what's classed as the five and three quarter inch, this one here. And I think they did them from four and three eighths or something like that there. What I'll do is I'll chuck you a picture up here so you can see all the different sizes of uh, footprint adjustables they did up to about 18 inches by the looks of it. So uh, if I could get hold of an 18 inch one, I'd be quite happy. I must admit, especially an early one like this one here. Okay then, let's move along to the Abingdons and King Dicks here. This lot right here. I've, uh, I've got a uh, review of this Abingdon Eco. Um, on the channel. I'll put a link up the top here so you can go, go along and take a look at it. Just there. We've got the uh, some stampings there. British made and the um, patent number. This is quite nice. Again we've got a slightly different um, way of building things and the way it operates too. Just stampings, stampings and foldings as you can see that's all it is. And what else have we got here? Um, we have, what have we got here, what does that say on there, steel, and then we've got the little the dog logo here. Okay, so we can just about make out the bulldog logo here. This one with the bulldog by itself, I think it's got King Dick written or Abingdon written underneath it as well. Uh, this was used from 1881, this is their earliest logo is this one. I have uh, at least two, two uh, King Dick's Abingdons with this mark on, the Bulldog mark. This is their second marking and was used from 1885 onwards. This one here is a little tiny bicycle wrench. How long is this one? I can't remember. This one's three inches long. Look at that. Tiny little thing. Very nice. I like that one. Got this from the uh, boot sale probably a year or so ago. Over a year ago probably. So we've got the um, second trademark on here. I think we've got number one in there. Number one faintly stamped in there. Over here we have Abingdon and the little bulldog just there, look, on the lower jaw. Don't think we've got any other marks on this one. No, okay, pop him down. Um, this one is marked as uh, Abingdon with the uh, second mark on there. This has got a number, uh, what's that got on there? Number one. That's interesting. So what's this one got on it then? It's very faint that one. But this one's a uh, number one. Any other markings on this one? Oh yes. Just the thing I like. A previous owner's initials. Now I love finding tools with this one because it gives them an extra history. This one also has some other stampings inside it. Um, if we just open the jaw up you'd see he stamped, I think it's E16 or something on this one as well. For some reason or other they're well hidden. One is inside the jaw, just in there. And the others are along the um, bar here. So why he's hidden uh, markings in there, I don't know. But uh, yeah. Okay, what have we got here? Then we've got another one here. This one's um, marked as steel. 
It's got the uh, little Bulldog logo on there, so this is an early one from about 1881 to 1885 then. This one doesn't have any other markings on it at all. I've got another one down in the workshop, I'll just pop and get it, where I have a whole collection of other um, King Dick style wrenches, I've got loads of them down there. This one here. Now this one's actually marked just in here, I think it is. Yeah, there we go. Air Ministry, there we go. Has that got a date on it as well? I'll have to get a better picture than that. But uh, yeah, so it's got Air Ministry. I'll pop a picture up just here for you of it. And we've got the uh, second marking, Abingdon. I thought one of these actually had a number seven stamped on it somewhere. I thought it was this one here. But it doesn't, it's just, um, yeah, how odd. I could have swore one of these had uh, Oh, here we are. This one's got number seven stamped on the jaws, look. Yeah, seven and seven. I wonder what that means. Hmm, interesting. What if it was the year? Hmm, that's interesting. All right, and so as I say, I just thought you might care to take a look at um, my collection of uh, smaller wrenches here. I say this one definitely goes back to 1900. You can tell by the stampings on it, so this is a really, really early, old model. I'd say it's been looked after fairly well as too, so that's quite good, I like that one. Um, I've only got, um, I believe I've only got two of these at the moment, so next time when the boot sale opens I should be looking for some more of these little fellows. Especially if I can find an 18 inch one, that would be good. Um, I've got loads of Abingdons as you can see, the Garringtons are quite good, I've got a 10 and an 8 inch. Um, I think my friend Ben has got a small one of these, a six inch, so I'll be looking out for a six inch uh, this year. Um, yeah, whether this is a, a Joseph Lucas, I don't know. It could be a copy, but it's got the screw missing out of it. But yeah, um, and as I say, look at the different operating mechanisms we've got over the years as well. Um, this is one we're more um, familiar with these days, the Barco style. But yeah, so there's been a, quite a few ideas tried for adjustable spanners over the uh, years. I do actually have uh, several other adjustable spanners out there with, again, completely different mechanisms on them. That might make, make an interesting video for the future too, so I might have to uh, have a go at making that one for you, if you want to have a look at it, guys. I've got some really early spanners, some later ones. But yeah, what do you think of this lot then, guys? Um, this one... The Air Ministry one is, where's the Air Ministry one? That's the Air Ministry one. That's a bit battered up as you can see, so somebody's had a right go at that one for some reason or other. Flattened it just there, I don't know why they would want to do that. But uh, yeah, what an interesting uh, selection of old spanners in my collection here. Love them. Okay everyone, I hope you enjoyed popping over to Rathbow Manor and taking a look at my uh, little spanners here. So I've got some larger versions of uh, these ones about, but I just thought I'd include, apart from this one here, the two 10 inches, 9 inch and 10 inch. I thought I'd just include those because they're interesting anyway, and they're part of what are we looking at here. Different ages again. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed popping over to uh, Rathbone Manor, taking a look at this lot. Um, I do hope you'll pop over again in the very near future, because I'm sure I'll have something other, um, other interesting tools to take a look at. And um, yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs>